Stan Jubilisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1. GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations at your service to describe a little experiment that you can do and that I did many years ago. It involves using an incandescent light bulb as a dummy load. Back in the old days, I guess that would be 1966, when I was first licensed, I had a Viking Adventurer transmitter, and they recommended that you could use a light bulb as a dummy load, just connect it right to the output of the transmitter. Well, I did that for a while until I got my license. And actually, you had to wait until your license came in the mail back in those days, and it could take up to six weeks after your exam. You pass your exam, you wait a month and a half to get your first license. Wow. But anyway, I connected up this light bulb, and as I remember, it was 60-watt light bulb. The transmitter produced 50 watts plate power input, therefore about 25, maybe 30 watts of RF output. Well, these days, a standard transmitter uh, that you can buy, um, for example, the one that I have in my uh, fixed station is a, an IC746 Pro, can put up to 100 watts output RF. And uh, in the mobile application, I have a Yaesu FT857D, which can also put up a up to about 100 watts output. Nowadays your transmitters are a little more finicky about the impedance that they'll accept at the load so you're going to need a transmatch here between the transmitter and the light bulb. Now what I'd recommend you do is you get a 15 watt incandescent bulb. Not a hundred watts but only 15 watts. I tried this experiment long ago with my Drake T4X transmitter, which could also put out pretty close to 100 watts, and a Viking matchbox transmatch. Any transmatch should work. You can use either the balanced or the unbalanced output uh, connectors. Just connect that light bulb right across there, your coax between your transmatch and your radio, just as you normally would do. Instead of connecting your antenna feed line here, connect this bulb. <clears throat> Start out with uh, very low power and tune your transmatch until you get a minimum SWR. The reason for starting out with low power is that um, you, you don't want to hit that thing with high power. You never tune up with high power, you know. But if you run low power into this bulb, it'll probably just barely glow. And uh, if you get it up to about 15 watts, it should glow at about the normal intensity that you would expect a 15 watt bulb to glow at. As you further increase the power, you're going to have to do it gradually, and you can adjust this transmatch to keep the SWR down. The problem here is that the impedance at this load is going to change as the filament in that light bulb gets hotter and hotter because the resistance of an incandescent bulb goes down as the filament, or pardon me, it, uh, it goes up as the filament gets hotter. So you're going to have to continually adjust this transmatch. However, once you get your transmitter all the way up to 100 watts, you should notice something very interesting if you get the same results that I did years ago with that T4X. That light bulb's still going to be glowing. It's not going to have burned out, but it will be glowing as brightly as a 100 watt bulb would. Brighter than you could ever get a 15 watt bulb to glow by putting 60 Hertz AC into it. Suppose you, you oh, just pick a band, 7 megahertz band. When you put RF into a light bulb instead of uh, 60 Hertz AC into an incandescent bulb, now it has to be an incandescent bulb. A compact fluorescent lamp will not work 
for this application an LED lamp will not work either it has to be one of those old-fashioned incandescent bulbs I don't know how much power you could get away with running before you finally burn that bulb out but if you get the same results <clears throat> that I did you will find that you can get that bulb to glow like a hundred watts. Now I found that to be fascinating and thought way back then that there must be some application for this. There must be somebody's gonna discover that you can do this. And that you could because obviously that thing's gotta be working a lot more efficiently than an ordinary hundred watt bulb would do, don't you think? Well maybe not, maybe not, but the interesting thing about it was somebody's going to discover this and if it does operate more efficiently they're going to start using RF devices to drive bulbs well they do that nowadays they do in fact use what they call ballasted bulbs or ballast which is just a fancy way of saying they're driving RF into a bulb and all that RF floating around is just one more problem for us radio hams. It creates the general noise environment with which we are going to have to increasingly deal because the people who want those things are going to have them and there are a lot more of them than there are of us. Stangibilis. Well, that would change if I were president of the United States. I'd get some sort of executive order. I would make the Environmental Protection Agency regulate these ballasted bulbs so heavily that they'd cost $500 a piece. That'd reduce the noise for ham radio operators. <laughs> Stangibilisco. Yeah, right. Stan Gibalisco signing off, saying 73 for now, and so long till next time.